Next coming up on USA in this corner, Mike Tyson, one on one, doesn't hold back. He shares uh, many opinions, uh, including his thoughts on the rising heavyweight star by the name of George Foreman. Foreman is a great entertainer. You know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, he, he made a remarkable comeback fighting 22 guys. But can I tell you that? Have I ever fought 22 guys? They take my license away. The 22 guys he fought in the comeback. I mean, they're, they're stripping me of my license. They're laughing at me. They're, they're making such a story because the idea of a 50-year guy or a 45-year guy doing this to young guys, you know what I mean, that has that a former drug addict and just come out of the rehab center to make some money to fight for him. And, you know what I mean, it's remarkable. But one day I'll give him a fight. I might be lucky enough to kill him. Tonight's edition of In This Corner is being brought to you by Cole Advil, advanced formula for cold and sinus relief. In this corner tonight, uh, this poster you see all over Atlantic City, Tyson versus Stewart. December 8th, Mike Tyson back in the ring against Alex Stewart. And imagine what's going to be going through the mind of Mike Tyson Thursday night when he's here in Atlantic City sitting in front of a TV set and watching Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield square off for the heavyweight championship of the world. It will be the first time in three and a half years that Tyson is not involved in that fight. And he says that he is convinced that that will be the lone exception. Since his shocking loss to Buster Douglas last February in Tokyo, Mike Tyson has fought once, a first-round destruction of Henry Tillman in June. In September, while training, Tyson suffered a gash over the eye, reputed to need anywhere from 30 to 50 stitches. Team Tyson now consists of Rich Giacchetti, the trainer of former heavyweight champ Larry Holmes, brought in by Don King after the Douglas loss to work with holdovers Jay Bright and Aaron Snow. With his cut fully healed, Tyson is back in serious training. And as he prepares for his bout with Stewart, Michael Marley had a chance to sit down and talk to the former champ one-on-one. -on -one. Mike, in a couple of nights, two men are going to be fighting for what you used to own, the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Does it seem weird to you that you'll be watching two other guys fight for the three title belts? Basically, I have no say so. I don't give a about who wins, you know, I mean, just basically, I mean, I'm, it's, there's no fight without me, there's no real championship fight without me, one guy, you know what I mean, who I believe holds an outstanding fighter, you know what I mean, I, it's very difficult in this fight to choose because one guy is an outstanding little guy and the other guy's a big man, but he's not a great big man, mostly when you see two great champions, the great big man against a great little man, a great little man against an outstanding big man, but you know what I mean, he had a good night and he beat me in Tokyo, you know what I mean, God forbid, he fought a great fight that night. I didn't. But what do you do? He quit against guys lesser than Holofield. You know what I mean? And then once you quit, you always quit. You know what I mean? They talk about I took my beat and I got beat up in Tokyo. See, I took my beat like a man. He never took a beat and he quit before he could ever take a beat. You know what I mean? That's testing what he has inside. Like I was saying, for the championship don't mean unless you stand for something. You know what I mean? And we'll see how long he had it. I had it. When you think of guys that had it for six years, four years, dimpty, how long he had it, seven years. I had it for, what, three and a half years. I made 11 defenses of my title. And for three and a half years making 11 defenses, I'm up there in the all-time ranks with Tommy Burns and those guys. I mean, let's see how long he keeps the title. Let's see how many defenses he makes. Mike, you said Buster Douglas had a lucky night in the ring in Japan against a bum. Were you a bum in that fight? When I made that statement, I met the guy, you know what I mean, with a frame of mind, you know, with just no aptitude of fighting. You say, ah, what the hell? And like I said, after the fight, I said, they didn't make a big stink out of it. The country stopped for one minute. I said, what the hell? the hell with it? I'm going to go home, I'm going to fill my eye, and I'm going to get some ice cream, and I'm going to go out, back out and date and continue to do what I want to do. I'll get the title back. The fight game is nothing without me. Like, they have two guys fighting. Who knows about this? People don't even know they're fighting. You know what I mean? What the hell? I'm just, I'm just looking forward for the winner. If Douglas beats Holyfield, it looks as though you've got a rematch with Buster. Some people think you'll stiff Alex Stewart and not fight him in December. No, he, he shouldn't believe that at all because you know why? 
Because after, cause after I, I kick Stuart ass and give him a slow beating, nearly death, I'm going to take whoever the win after that, the Holyfield Douglas fight, and then regain my title. And hopefully I can fight Ray the Ruddick or this other guy, George Foreman, before he die of, you know what I mean, rigor mortis. Mike, you seem to be incensed about criticism that you've received. What's your feeling about the criticism? These guys never fought in their damn life, and still they're going to be... Um, and psychologists and say, I, I'm a squam, swami, and I could look at Mike Tyson's brain and I tell from by the way he's acting, this is what he's thinking, which is, you know what I mean? And the, um, the only thing that's unbelievable is that the public believes this, you know what I mean? And they believe this, and I, you know what I mean? These guys are idiots. You know what I mean? They, they never fought a, a day in their life. And then but these are the same guys that talk about me on television, like I'm some billion more, and I don't see what's, I don't see them on television. People don't tell me. They say, hey, Mike, how you doing? You look in great shape. You look good, man. Boy, you would, hey, man, please, man, have the, get in my face and say, Mike, I think you're an individual. They can't say I'm a bum. I'm not a good fighter. Because, you know what I mean, three and a half years and 11 defenses proved it. You know, they can't say that. So they could just say, Mike, you're a hell of a fighter, but I think you're a dog. I think I hate your attitude. I hate what you stand for, you know what I mean, or whatever. I mean, have the guts to say that. Mike, when you think about what happened that uh, Sunday afternoon in Japan, are you irritated at yourself, or have you put it behind you? No, because basically when, I, when the fight was over, I saw, here, yeah, this go again. You know, you deal with it. And, you know, basically, you know, I mean, those things happen in life. You lose fights, you lose in life, you lose someone you love. But, you know what I mean, it's the person that comes back from that. Anybody can win a a fight. I could put you in there with somebody you could win a fight, you know what I mean? And you could continue to win, and you say, wow, this is great, I'm going to win, I'm going to continue to win. Then one day you lose, you know what I mean? It disembobulates your whole frame of thought and everything, you know what I mean? But anybody, you know what I mean? The man's not, um, thought of, the man's not um, thought of greatness because how many times he's raised in victory, this quote is. It's how many times he brings himself up from the brink of destruction. Because anybody can win. I mean, anybody can win. It's like when you lose, guys go broke and they come back. You know what I mean? It's just, like I say, it's a, a, a domino theory. You come, you know, you come down, you go down. You know, you don't lose and then everything goes down. I mean, what the hell happened? Big deal. I lost a fight. You know what I mean? What, I made $12 million for losing a fight or some crap like that? You know what I mean? I'm even bigger now and I got more money now from losing a fight than I did when I was champion. They pay me more now. The hundred million dollars or whatever somebody can get from making this means nothing to me. You know what I mean? It's what I went through my five years, my six years since I've been fighting. What I went through, and if that's having everything, what I have now, if that's having everything, I would have been a lot happier with a lot less. You know what I mean? I could do a lot better with a lot less. Because they put you through it, they, you know what I mean? They make you accustomed to it. And it's because of that, you have to, you know what I mean? Low yourself down and become a horror to the system because they put you in that position. There's no way you could turn back now because you're there already. From your own lips, what does Mike Tyson stand for? I stand for everything, you know what I mean, that's, that's wrong in America. Any black man, black woman, anybody from any level of race, like Indians, Puerto Ricans, this, that, I'm more with them. I'm more for the underdog. We, you know what I mean? You got to stick together in life, you know what I mean? And I stand for them. You know what I mean? That's what I stand for. When you look at me fighting, I'm not saying that I'm anti-white. By no means. By no means I'm anti-white. Because, you know what I mean, there's some Irishes and some Jews that get shit on too because they have nothing. You know what I mean? And the majority is what they stand for, what you have and what you own. But like I said, the greatest asset is not what, what, you, what you have is inside. It's inside of you that basically counts. Because I'm always going to be a public champion. Wherever I go, wherever I go, any country, any state, I go right to the ghetto because that's where I'm from. Regardless of, I thank people, you know what I mean? for making me articulate and you know eloquent and I'm able to talk to everyone and all that. That's good. But you know, where I'm I'm not from there. I'm from I'm from the ghetto. I'm from the dirt hard bone segregated ghetto. That's where I'm from. When will we know that the real Mike Tyson is back in the ring? Well when you see me take care of this guy, what's his name again on December eighth, Mr. Stewart? Then you find out. Oh, he's been talking a lot. He's been talking a lot. He's been talking a lot. He's gonna be a slow, slow night for him. Laid back, laconic, Mike Tyson? That may be the public perception, but as Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield get ready to fight for what Tyson considers his title, one thing seems abundantly clear. Mike Tyson is in a fighting mood again. For the USA Network, this is Michael Marley reporting.